This NFL Picks Week Three edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by the SGPN merch store. From now until Tuesday, get twenty percent off when you use the promo code NFC Beast. Hey, it's Peyton Manning, and you're listening to SGPN. Let's rock. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Sean, uh, it, it's been it's been some time. I wanted to go wide here. It's been some time. Some some will say uh, as the sun travel or the earth travels around the sun, it's been six no six years, Sean, since the last time. That we can both be sitting here <laughs> with two and O teams, two and O, probably the same amount of time since the NFC East has had the best collective record <laughs> in the conference as Six well. Six and two, baby. Woo! Dan Jones looking forward, not backwards. All these haters bringing up Daniel Jones <laughs> stats. Go fuck yourself. Six and two. NFC East is leading, and you heard it in the pre-rolls in honor of. <laughs> The uh, both the Eagles and the Giants being two and zero, we are doing twenty percent off in the SGPN merch store. Uh, use the promo code NFC Beast, and uh, yeah, up and up and deciding to up the ante on Merch Monday. Uh, normally, it's only a fifty dollar gift card this week, hundred dollar gift card, and uh, since we're we've been climbing the charts, also if oh. you guys want to submit, you giving us a f- uh, five star on Spotify as well. Appreciate that. I know. I know the Spotify listeners growing strong. So, screenshot you submitting five star on Spotify. Open up the SGPN app. Click uh, contest, and it's very easy to submit it. Hundred dollar gift card every Monday, aka March Monday. Ryan, that sounds good. I was gonna say, are we juicing it up if we if the you know if well, something crazy happens? How about this? If oh. the if both the Eagles and the oh. Giants go two and zero. Oh, <laughs> Well, that they are, they are that, oh, sorry. Go two and zero oh this week, Ryan. Oh, we'll right. juice it up to two hundred dollars. Wow. So really, get those entries in for Merch Monday. Uh, it takes you literally like two seconds. Again, the show is free. The content is free. Appreciate all the support. I mean, we were up there. Uh, we got as high as like number th- uh, 13, 10, 11, Like didn't quite crack the top ten of the Apple Podcast sports charts, but we are close. Damn it! So subscribe, unsubscribe a million times. Yeah. Uh, send it in the reviews. It all helps. As uh, unless you're a big gambling guy, because we're we're small business here. So if you're big gambling, <laughs> you're pro big gambling. Oh, yes. Feel free. Not big gambling guys were okay. Not big gambling uh, content size. If you're physically large, yes. that's that's cool. If you're we're, one of the guys who orders a triple XL uh, out of the merch store, we got you. I mean, I don't want to pull back the curtain too far, but we actually had to decline doing business with a company because they did not offer triple XL. Yes, so that was a that was a non-starter. <laughs> yes, sir. But yeah, if you want to, because all I see in the charts is big, big gambling, big business, and and then there's the little guy floating. Bunch through. of corporations, and we're kicking their ass because we got a uh, awesome squad of listeners. Great team over at SGPN. Oh, Let's oh, go, baby. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Let's get this content train. I'm ready to run through a brick wall. I'm jacked up. We're gonna talk about NFL, the National Football League. Week three is here. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash win bet. Bet a hundred dollars. Get a hundred dollar free bet. Hundred percent deposit bonus up to a one thousand dollars for the win bet casino. Yes, we also have the double dimes club. Uh if you're if you're uh, getting down, aka 2K a week in the NFL, you should be doing it over on win bet because they hook you up. Uh, the double dimes club prize. This is again for some big dogs only, but if you are a big dog, 
uh, sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. And man, they really have it all over here. Build your own bet, AKA the same game parlay. Cash a massive parlay. Sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. Offer subject to change terms and conditions. WinBet.com is 21 or older and present to say we're play through women is available. If you're somebody you know has a gaming problem, call 1 800 522 4700. And again, uh, you watch your football this Saturday, this Sunday. Do it on Fubo TV. I mean, uh, again, college and pro football, NFL red zone, uh, 4K games at no extra charge. Sorry, Colby, they got 4K over there and mm. all at the fraction of, of the price of cable. If you're still paying full price for cable, I don't know what you're doing. And then uh, cloud based DVR, you can watch all your shows. Games on the go. Uh, try it now for free. FuboTV.com slash SGP. Seven days free and 15% off your first month. FuboTV.com slash SGP. Last but not least, Odds Trader. That's right. Odds Trader is your one stop shop when it comes to game stats, injury reports, projected game day weather. Great for uh, looking for live odds or again, you know, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, right before you place your bets. OddsTrader.com. Make sure you check in over there. OddsTrader.com slash Blue Wire. Odds trader.com slash blue wire, the number one site for all your game day bets. Let's go. Uh, Sorry, did I scare well, you with my energy right No, I was just going to make a, a joke. Maybe they're 1B to R1A for your <laughs> game day sites. Well, uh, you know, they get, they get you with the uh, we're weather more of an audio information. Thing. We're an audio. Thing. Yeah, I, exactly. I do like a good weather source. You know that, Sean. So let's uh, uh, let's let's get, before we get into the picks, let's take some time to tout King Kramer himself, four and zero with his locks, undefeated with his locks. Uh, I'm only one and three with my locks. However, I've hit two However. money line dogs to boost you up a uh, three point nine units. And Ooh, look at you, and one and one with my teases, which usually I suck at my teases. I've already hit one this year. That's not a bad start. And then uh, Circa, we're six and four. In spite of uh, you know a couple of my locks not helping out there, so off to a nice start, Kramer. Uh, I I think I did the math right. You didn't include this. I should probably add it to the sheet. I need a first touchdown column in the oh yeah in the Google Street because we're we are on an incredible run. Forget units because the Disley it's off the charts. It's, it's off the charts. We it's, broke the model with the Disley. We're we're, no, we're definitely north. If you play uh, either of our models, you're probably north <laughs> of a dozen, maybe fifteen units. But we're four and three if you just grade us game by game. Yeah. There have been seven primetime games so far this year. We've hit first touchdowns on four of them. It's insane. Think about that. All right. I'm no crystal of- ball here. <laughs> I don't know. It feels good. It feels like it, sometimes we've had slow starts. We're not having a slow start. Nope. feels good. feels also like now that football is back to being normal, my handicapping brain, my football watching brain mm. is, is dominating. And honestly, I, I, I have to pinch myself every day. And again, if you're a friend of the program and you're in the Los Angeles area and you want to have have a a moment where you can say you've been to Mecca and seen got seen God's eye. I think we have a decided advantage <laughs> over people because we don't have how many shortcuts do would you say we generally watch in a given week? Maybe the afternoon games plus one early game because uh, we like the- we watch all the games on Sunday and then during the day during uh, work <laughs> hours, aka grinding out film, we'll just rewatch the condensed games as well. And and it's helpful because even when. I am watching all the games. There's shit you miss. Like Amari Cooper, not like Amari Cooper Amari making Cooper, a business decision. Yeah, making the business decision for the onside kick. That's something that, you know, I, I was looking at some other screen. Again, <laughs> you know, inevitably that where the sound's on that like a dog, you're kind of trained to that screen. And Sean, as much as you will hate to admit this, we I I I piloted the we run the the red zone on the main TV. And uh, again, Giants were on TV five front and center. I was, I was locked in, mm. but having that red zone on, I, f- I, again, I feel like decided advantage versus the ve- way more after work needed when we were in Vegas, <laughs> way more after work needed. So anyway, I'm fucking dialed into the, the league right now. Let's go. And, and you know, dogs have been off to a great start. Dogs are 18, uh, 13 yeah. and one ATS home team, 17, 14, one ATS. Home dogs, AK, what we like, nine, five, and one ATS unders, 21, 10, and one, 68%. Uh, 
uh, highest under percent of 68% through week two since 1996. You know, the concern was everyone goes, Oh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're calling these bullshit yeah. um, incidental contacts. It's going to juice up the scoring. Maybe and I don't know. I'd have to compare historical numbers, but feels like one of those years where oh whoops we made a mistake. Maybe maybe got to ever so or or we're due for uh, a, a crazy overweek. Uh, shout out to Josh, your social guy, who just <laughs> goes, I'm betting all every all sixteen overs, and I don't I don't hate that strategy. Uh we're kind of an under shop, so. Yeah. Maybe we'll we'll talk to him about uh, being a bit, little bit more aware of the corporate uh, pillars and principles. And, and primetime unders, I think, are either six and zero oh or six and one. But um, yeah, man, it's a it's it's a great time. Bills are National the only football league. Bills are the only primetime game to go over. No, well, I think that one might have been a push because oh, I think some it. people got it at forty eight. Again, it. that's why some of these are like. You know, that is it's an opening number? Is it closing number? It's the number we talk about it at because exactly. that's the only way. It's on record. Can I throw in one sure. more nugget uh, so far macro for the season? Yep. We we noticed last year fading the public. It was it was not a super profitable thing. Yep. This year, eleven, twenty, and one. The public is oh really the spread. So public being defined as uh, having more of the action. All right. I, I mean, again, we're fa- FTP, if you, fade if you the public. blindly faded the public. You, we would be 20, 11 and one ATS. So <laughs> I guess there was one game that was split perfectly down the middle uh, based on this data source. But again, I, I noted this to you before we got started. It feels like more than any week I can remember. We have this convergence of home dogs, uh, gross teams that need a win. Dog. Uh all the money's coming in on the road team. That's favored. Just yeah. lots of just gross situations, I guess, kind of starting with Thursday night. Well, and, and just real quick one that applies, I think to at least a couple games here since 2010, winless teams are 45, 29 and one ATS when not facing another winless team in week three. So you're talking 61% cover Bengals, Panthers, Falcons would be those teams, Tennessee and Las Vegas play. Well, Falcons other. are facing Seattle. Who's also, Oh, Seattle's not winless. You're right. not winless. Mm. I don't know if I can take Falcons. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I mean, the Falcons on the road. Are you kidding me? You brought a trend to the party and aren't going to back it. I, Come on. Sean. I, I, I bring up the trends, but ultimately the gut is my guide, Ryan. And of course, we will uh, reintroduce everyone to the close your eyes special. Oh no, it's back. Twenty-one point underperformance, uh, followed up by catching points, historic trend somewhere in the sixty-six point six 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 range. So tread lightly. It's meant to be gross. We dubbed it the the close your eyes special because I don't know. I guess we were closer to college age when you would just turn the lights out and close <laughs> your eyes, and that's where that's where the name that's where the name that originated. That is a disgusting act. Much like the Courtney Love uh, spread that Colby likes to bring, uh, that's the close your eyes special. All right, Thursday night, Steelers. We got some AFC North that, uh, action here, and uh, kind of a historic spot. Pittsburgh heads to Cleveland, where the Browns are laying four and a half points, minus two hundred on the money line. Steelers plus one sixty five. Thirty eight is the total. Mitchell Trubisky is coming home. Homecoming for uh, Mitch. I I miss is that, that good or bad. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, there there's a number of uh, numbers that are really bad for the Browns. Own six against the spread. Their last six home games. Stefanski has just not got it done in a number of ways. Oh, He's seven and yes. fifteen as a favorite. He's one and eleven That's ATS it. in the division. Zero oh and seven as a favorite in the division. Zero oh and four ATS. Yeah. Against Mike Tomlin, yes. I think yeah. I think actually they did cover in that playoff game, but Stefanski was in his basement, so he I don't think he, coaching. It yeah, I don't count. think he got credit for that one. Count. Maybe he uh, he would probably argue he should, but again, uh, this is just going to be a, a an ugly game. I, I I just can't imagine. You know the what did you did you say the number on four and a half. Yeah, four and a half. It's tough to really make the Browns a four and a half point favorite. The way they collapsed against the Jets, the way they barely beat that Panthers team on the road, they just do, the, Jacoby Brissett laying points. And and I should have thought of that more, or had that ingrained in me more. Again, it was Joe Flacco on the road, but to me, Mitch Trubisky on the road, maybe that's kind of close there. I I think the Steelers will be able to generate some offense by just maybe giving it a ton. To uh, Najee Harris, 
I think people are really, really down on this page or this Steelers team after, you know, they, it took a lot for them to get the the win week one. It took, you know, they, the, the Patriots, I don't know if is, is a team that people are super high on. So I'm, I think this speaks more about the Steelers. Like I think the money came in when this opened on the Browns because people wanted to bet against the Steelers. And I just don't yeah. get it in a in this situation. It's not a long road trip. It's two teams that know each other. They kind of it kind of uh, uh, evaporates some of the Thursday night road like toughness, right? Well, and and you know, the and oh, by the, the way, the Mr. Ohio from 2012, <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky is coming to town. Two years before Joe Burrow won the award, by the way. Yes. If you did not know that, uh, I, I think. Look, we 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 always we saw it with Kyler last week. There comes the moment when the guy's like, "Fuck it, I got to use my legs." And we saw when when Mitch was fuck it using his legs back a couple years ago. He was he was a functional mover of an offense. And when the defense the defense knows how to play against Cleveland. Well, and 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 you know, I know uh, Snoop Dogg is is. Did you see the video of Snoop Dogg basically calling out Matt Canada, <laughs> saying uh, he goes, "Yo, Mike Tomlin." This is Snoop Dogg. It's funny also that Snoop Dogg points out he's Snoop Dogg. He goes, We need to fire our bum ass offensive coordinator. Get a real coordinator. Peace out, Snoop, or whatever Very it was. Very awkward because you know Mike Tomlin A watched it. Yeah. How would you not watch that video if B, Mike Tomlin was offended that Snoop <laughs> felt like he had to intro himself yeah. to Mike Tomlin. Well, and, and poor Matt Canada. What if Matt Canada was like a massive Snoop Dogg fan? The poor guy just gets clowned by him. But rightly so. I mean, you know, Trubisky does a couple things okay, and I feel like they're not doing it enough. Like, where is the read option stuff? I mean, we saw it with Nick Foles, who's not even who's like way less mobile than Trubisky, but like Trubisky can run a little bit. And when he came in uh in backup duty and mop up duty, granted, for Buffalo, like they ran an offense that fit his strengths in the same way that the Bears are doing Justin Fields no favors with the type of offense they're running. They should be, you know, it should be a lot of like uh read option stuff, get the pistol going, boot action. Pistol. Uh <laughs> boot action with uh Trubisky like they're I feel like they're I thought they'd be a little bit more inventive with their offense when they had Trubisky in there. It's it's too vanilla. Like you need to scheme up some easy wins for Trubisky. There there is always that boomer angle that Maybe Tomlin is influencing this offense more than we know, and he doesn't want them to take the risks. Uh, but could I, be. Well, here, here's the tough part. It's like, you know, I don't want to spend all day on, on this game, but even without the handicap of oh, I think I like this team to just play well because I don't think it's a super tough road spot because they know the Browns and because it's it's not a, a long trip like mileage wise. Uh, I more I'm just this is just kind of what do they call that uh, when when something's established like taking Tomlin as a dog in the yeah. division uh all the trends that you laid out I, I think you said gave out the Tomlin divisional dog 26 and 2 ATS No all time. I didn't but oh, that's great didn't, uh I I I just I I don't see a world where I'm laying these points with Brissett ever and and while it concerns me a little bit that I think the money is going to come back if it hasn't already on Pittsburgh, I think at four and a half, what did it, it went all the way to five, right? I mean, it may have gone as high. If, I I think this is this is a blind bet on Pittsburgh. Yeah. Even if I didn't like the situation. Well, and and come on, you know, if the game is close at the end, you don't think the Browns are going to be thinking about how they how they how they completely blew it against the Jets? Like that has to be in the back of their head. And I think the I think the Steelers defense is good enough to kind of slow down whatever the whatever the Browns should be able to do. And the weather is crazy. 20 uh 20 plus mile per hour wind. Who does wind, that help? <laughs> chance of rain. I think it always helps the dog because it just uglies the game up even more. Um and I I, I think it's just going to be an ugly ugly field goal game. And you look at the injury report. I mean, it does oh, sound like Conklin and Miles Garrett will play, but they're not clearly 100% uh, Jadavian Clowney is out again. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know if it's, that's a major thing, but it certainly would help um, Pittsburgh in their offensive line a little bit. Yeah, no. I mean, it, it based on who you listen to, it sounds like Garrett will play. It does sound like he might not be a hundred percent if he does play. Well, I mean, yeah, we're taping this obviously Wednesday evening. Conklin as well. It sounds like will play, but uh, you know, I think at uh, at the end of the day. You just compare the two injury reports. One of these teams banged up, and 
I don't think we mentioned it yet, but the players only meeting. Do we have have you heard what reportedly was discussed? No. Kevin Stefanski bringing his kids on the field. Really? No, but oh. I wish it was. <laughs> that I was mean, an all-time jinx. And as Patrick Fisher points out and uh Fanger Banger, uh Brownie the Elf 0 and 1. If they made an if they really wanted to win back the city of Cleveland, they would have immediately painted over Brownie the Elf. And maybe they will. What did I, say I don't you? know. What did I say to you? Not betting on this team as long as that thing's on the fucking. Field. No, that is a horrible sign for so gambling. We spent a lot of time to talk Steelers about it. Steelers plus four. And Got a half. us all the way there. Sunday, Baltimore heads the New England. Feels like this is a classic rivalry: Harbaugh versus Belichick. Baltimore laying two and a half, minus one forty-five on the money line. New England plus one twenty. Forty-three and a half is the total. On one hand, this is short of three. Yep. Which makes Baltimore appealing. On the other hand, we know the rule that you take the two and a half and you lay the three and a half. <laughs> I don't know about that rule anymore. Well, uh, it it led us astray last week yes. for sure. Uh, Belichick kind of owns this matchup. Like that's that's where you start with this one, I think. And thirteen and five specifically as a home underdog, two like. Belichick versus Harbaugh, Belichick at home, Belichick home underdog, Belichick with a team that's clearly being undervalued by the public, Baltimore, a team that clearly is like something's not right with this team. Well, and I and I think, you know, you can't blow a game like that. You can't have a 99% post game win expectancy and lose the game when you're Lamar Jet. You can't fumble on the fucking goal line. You can't give up that lead. You can't Especially at home. I don't care what kind of defensive backfield cluster injuries you have. You can't just let Tyree Kill run by you. You know what he's into. Well, but then also I I guess to that point, if, you know, do the Patriots have the horses to really take advantage of the Ravens cornerback situation. Are Do they I think be- Belichick can see an obvious weakness and it maybe exploit it? I mean, yes. Nelson Aguilar did get some. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about when the Steelers needed a stop at the end of the game yeah. against the Patriots? The Patriots just ran the ball, couldn't stop them. Yeah. So the Jets they they had a pretty effective uh, attack on the ground against the Ravens. I'm a little worried that the Ravens could get beat up by some basic ass shit. Pats are six and zero at home in the regular season versus the Ravens all time. I mean, some of these are hard to hard to really take much out of uh, because it's you know Brady and obviously Mac Jones completely different um, situation there. New England has been playing pretty good defense, uh, rushing yards allowed seventy eight per game. Um, so they've been and and yards per attempt down to three and a half. So they've been good at slowing down the running game. But Baltimore doesn't really have a running game. I mean, maybe J.K. Dobbins is finally practicing. Again, he said he was not going to miss any time, and that uh, who did he try to shove in a locker? Ian Rappaport. Uh, uh, yes, Ian Rappaport. Who now? I mean, if I was Ian Rappaport, I'd be coming back at him. Maybe he can't face another suspension after the Manscape. <laughs> that was thing. hilarious. Uh, Fanger Banger pointing out look ahead spot for the Ravens to the Bills. I would normally no. agree with you, but they they were coming off a really bad loss. And I think they kind of have a rivalry going with the Patriots, so I, I don't think they're going to look past Harbaugh. This doesn't, game. Harbaugh's not looking past Belichick. That, no, that's I I see what you're saying. I disagree with your take. Um, Buffalo's new blood, the Patriots thing that's been going for a while. And, and haven't we seen these matchups where Baltimore has been a really good team in the past, and they just can't get it done? I mean, I know uh, they've had some good, but fights. New England, no, no Damian Harris. Like walk me through how new England moves the ball. It's, it's getting Ramondre going. We, I mean, we've liked how he's looked. I think, you know, they're going to be able to plug and play a running back. Is Devonte Parker hurt yet? No, but he's not, he's not running a ton of routes. I, I, I think, you know, as much as we've clowned on the Patricia Joe judge thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm very torn. I mean, here. they put up 17 points. Like it's not like they lit up the world, but again, they got a they got a road win. I so mean, they, do we just ignore all of the things we've said? Ignore the fact that everyone's betting on the Ravens up, they right put now. Up, the, the Patriots have put up twenty four points this season, so I think it's fair to criticize their Nine, offense. Ninety percent of the action, ninety percent of the bets coming in on Baltimore. How much? Ninety. Again, there are nine spots, Sean. Not t- sorry, ten spots. 
yeah. where one team is receiving 70% or more of the action. This is one of them. And that's really the only thing keeping me off of Baltimore because of all the, and Baltimore just, just fucking got just lost the game. They should have fucking won. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go Baltimore on, and, the, on the bounce back situation. And, and I know the home dogs are juicy this week, but well, I, there's some home dogs I like better. Uh, so I'm not going to take all home dogs, but and as uh, research flat earth is pointing out in the chat, I, I even called this out last week. Maybe we just take Ravens in the first half. Maybe that's the safe play. I'm going to, I'm going to go Ravens minus two and a half. Ryan, what are you doing? I mean, I, I think there's a lot of logical ways for me to come, come on the Patriots oh, shit. <laughs> to end up on the Patriots. Here. <laughs> and <sighs> Which which one in particular? Right? Oh, all of them. But I, I just can't. I can't take. I mean, I, I I can't do it. I can't take Lamar in a spot where he might be really angry. And to your point, I don't know if pay, the Patriots can keep up if this turns into a shootout. Miami could because Tyreek Hill could run past them. And to your point, Belichick maybe can exploit a weakness. But I don't know if. Uh, give me the receivers. Who do we got? Uh, Kendrick Bourne. Yeah. Jacoby Myers. Nelson Aguilar. Aguilar. Are they? It's a baby fucking wheel, yeah, right, man. That's enough. I like the pace we're on this uh, picks podcast. <laughs> we're putting we're putting in a lot of talk, right? Well, it's week two because we, now we're like we're week mixing. Three. It's actually week three though. Oh yeah, week three. <laughs> we're mixing two weeks of actual yeah. data with our preseason stuff. The supercomputer Cook, is cooking up, up a nice. Uh, Nice. Right, uh, next up uh, on the rotation, 10 a.m. kick here on the West Coast. God's eye will be watching this one. Buffalo coming off Monday night football, heading to Miami. Whew, short rest, down in the heat. Miami, a six and a half point home dog, plus 210 on the money line. Buffalo minus 260. 52 and a half is the total. I don't know if this will get to f- seven. I mean, it's crazy if it does. This is a divisional matchup where we are seeing the Dolphins look to have an intelligent guy running the off. Imagine that Adam Gase was there not ten, not that long ago. Now they got this mad wizard, five foot nine, hundred nothing, and he's calling plays that are. I mean, they literally had a one percent chance to win this game. Everything in my everything in my gambling brain is like, oh, we can't wait to fade the Dolphins next week. And then this happens. But this situation then is, this it is perfect for the Dolphins. And in the same way that the Dolphins exploited a banged up Ravens secondary, this Bills secondary is coming in really banged up. I mean, Dane Jackson, oh, uh, he he was carted off the field. Uh, you got the safety Poyers questionable. The other safety I think is banged up. Like, I, I don't think um the Bills are gonna be able to slow down Ty- Tyree Kill and and Jalen Waddle and, and Tua has confidence right now. So look out. Yeah. And you have a Buffalo team on a short week going down to play Miami where it's gonna be hot as fuck. We saw we saw what was the one game Do where you have the weather in front of you? No. Okay. Go to oddstrader.com slash blue wire, Ryan. Um right. what was the one game that Buffalo really fucked up last year? It was in Jacksonville. Remember how bad it was? They won nine to they lost nine to six to the yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars. I just think this is a division game, a division home dog of, of this amount, uh, especially like we've seen they can score late. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bills win, but the six and a half is so big. 90 degrees with 100% humidity, partly cloudy with 15 mile an hour wind. Ugh. Yeah. Sounds horrible. Uh, all right. This is fun, right? Couple nuggets about the Bills. They've been dominating. All 14 of their wins in the past season plus have come by 12 points or more. That's amazing. But when they lose, they lose, obviously. All right, here's the fun part. They're dominating the spread this year. Yep. Average beating it by almost 22 points, defeating teams by almost 28 points. Since, you know, we'll call it 2000. There have been four teams in the 2020 club beating the spread and the actual team by 20 points. All four of those teams, 2019 Patriots, 2011 Lions, 2006 Chargers and Bears all lost against the spread week 3. Let's Why? go. What's the principle, Sean? The val- the, the overvaluing even with a team like the Dolphins who's coming in with this amazing spot. Ton of heat. Just they're, 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 they're just like the offense is working. Everyone's like, fuck yeah. And still Buffalo is so strong. Yeah. 
that they can they can do this to the market. Unfortunately, Sean, I I bet it early thinking it would go down cuz how could it possibly go up from 6? Goes the 6 and a half. So I have a bad number in my pocket right now. I'm coming on the Patriots and I got bad numbers <laughs> in my pocket. It's a bad beat for Kramer. But yeah. we're but we're taking all the, it fins <laughs> up, baby. Let's are, go. Are Shout out secretly, to Big Rob. Are you secretly jinxing the Dolphins no, right now for that. your Tua takes. I would never because they're freezing. Fuck your your Tua takes are on Jared Goff sucks island. Tua right takes now. are. Uh, We're having a hard time selling rooms right now with Jared Goff slinging the rock. I and, know it's not it's not been great for the hot take machine. Jared Goff. Tua Although the no Trey ATS. Lance take was dead on, <laughs> he would not oh, win MVP. Trey Lance is out on Jared Goff sucks island. Enjoying enjoying it all. All right, the Bengals. Sean. Yes. Zero and two. Yep. Super Bowl hangover is real. It not, really water is. does not cure the hangover in Cincinnati. Confirmed. Bengals minus five, minus two twenty on the money line as they head to New York to take on the J E T S Jets. Jet Flacco still back there, hopefully, because man, he has zero fucks to give, and I love it. Plus one eighty on the money line. Forty five is the total. I think I saw Cincinnati is on pace to give up one hundred and ten and a half sacks, which. 111, but yeah. Okay. Nice round up there. Uh, yeah. Joe Burrow, it, we said this in our preseason predictions about this when I, when I was tricked into being optimistic by our <laughs> bangle fr- fan friend, Mr. Wood, which by the way, where's the fuck? We need the Jersey. We need some juice. Oh yeah. Here. When's a Harambe we Jersey need getting Harambe here to help fix all of this, but they're Owen to, you could argue that they were pretty close to not being Owen to. But the offensive line's a problem. And this Jets defensive front has been okay. I absolutely have confidence that this Jets team can get up in the face of Joe Burrow. So it comes down to do I think that the Bengals defense is gonna hold down Joe Flacco at home yeah. with these receivers? I think they might. Um, and the, I think the Bengals defense has been playing pretty decent. It's really just the offensive line has been getting destroyed. If I was to make an excuse for them, I would say, well, they also faced uh, TJ Watt, and he was the one that really broke that game, and Micah Parsons, arguably the best pass rusher in the AFC and the best pass rusher in the NFC. Oh, okay. Um, so I think that, but Lyle Collins, he's trending towards that, but maybe they need a change of pace. <laughs> they need something. Um, and I just don't think. If they go 0 and 3, it's it would be the first time uh someone coming off a Super Bowl appearance went 0 and 3 since the 2002 Rams. Um here's what I think I have going for you. Now, this hasn't been as true as of late, but Ryan generally, mm-hmm. if you pick the team that wins, they also cover in the National Football League, right? What what do we well historically sure. what is that percentage? Yeah, well, I mean, it's the spread is dead, right? Yes. Lately it's been good. Too. It, w- it was exceptionally good the last couple of years. Uh, when was the last time the Jets had back to back wins? It's probably been a while. Yeah. December of 2020, right? Okay. This is this is why I'm going with the Bengals. Um, you know, and New York has actually been bad against bad teams. 0 and 11 straight up and against the spread in their last 11 games versus teams with a losing record. I. I just can't imagine Joe Burrow losing three games in a row. So give me Joe Burrow laying minus five. I I think they're gonna have trouble. There was passing opportunities against this Jets defense. I know we thought the Jets defense kind of looked good week one, but they they let up thirty points against Jacoby Brissett. Uh, would be my counter. I think Joe Mixon could have a big game, and I just like fading the Jets coming off a win. Yeah. No, I I. Uh... The Jets winning last week is a problem. If the Jets They didn't just win, they won in like miraculous oh, fashion. Oh, come on. They were down two scores with like I a mean, minute. I mean, we 50. could have watched Joe Flacco's last win in the NFL, right? Like let's be real. Um they I do dump, like I do like the the If they had Gatorade on the sideline, they dumped it. I I just it's just a massive get up spot for the Bengals and I'm struggling to find the reason why the Jets get hyped for this game. Now normally they're kind of frisky against good teams because they've like lost a bunch of games in a row and then they'll randomly pop their head up at home and Zach Wilson will beat the Titans or something like that. This isn't the case. They're coming off a win. They have the better record against the Bengals. I just don't see the Bengals walking out of that stadium 0 and 3 and the Jets 2 and 1. 
They, they, I, I desperate will, teams. I will say the the desperation element here for Cincinnati does make me want to look that way. Uh, they are on a back to back road spot, which small sample size, two yep. and one straight up and ATS so far this year on that. But I, I think I'm with you. Um, as much as I'm worried about the deficiencies of the Bengals, I, I they have to go out there and win this game and. I love that we get a team that's owing to ATS and straight up. And I love that we get to go against a Jets team that uh, unscheduled win, we'll call it. I mean, we got the cover last unscheduled, week. Unscheduled, yeah. This is now the third game in a row that we're talking about where the home team is getting less than 30% of the action. In this case, the Bengals, it's only 75 25, but still, uh, it always scares me when I hop on the public side. And now that's twice. Uh, it's, not my style, Sean. Detroit heads to Minnesota. Minnesota coming off a absolute slaughtering on Monday night football. Short rest now minus six, minus two fifty against the Lions, plus two hundred for Dan Campbell. Fifty three is the total. Dan Campbell four fourteen and one straight up. Dan Campbell thirteen and six. He, ATS. He breaks the uh, <laughs> he breaks that model of uh, you football know guy. Co- football guy exactly. Football guy. Um. Yeah, th- this is a trap, right? Like, why is why are the Detroit Lions getting eighty percent of the action here? See, that's why it's that's this why this is scared. a buy low spot. We saw w- Sean when we were handicapping the Vikings. What did we say about what do we always say about them? They have a sneaky home field edge. They're yeah. very good in the spaceship. Detroit, they're two and zero ATS. Everyone thinks they're great. But here's here's Their defense still fucking sucks. Here's some here's some counters. Well, oh. one, it, did you see the quote about Dan Campbell where he was talking about uh, Monday Night Football? He goes, normally, so he was like watching Monday Night Football, taking notes. And he goes, normally, like any fan would, I fell over backwards in my chair, drunk after the second half. I couldn't even take notes anymore. I woke up in the morning, got some aspirin. I'm good to go. Uh, this was him on scouting the Vikings. So shout out to uh, Dan Campbell. To me, what's interesting is I, this Lions team. Like the line play is really good, even with the injuries. They were getting a good push okay. off the line, and Aiden Hutchinson is off to a really good start. He had three sacks in the first half. I think if you can pressure Kirk Cousins, you certainly certainly can rattle him. And I think Amon Ra is the real deal. I think he's going to be able to get his again. I mean, if they sit back and play coverage, even a guy like Jared Goff, I think can pick them apart to some degree. What time is this game being played? Uh, it's normal time, non prime time, AKA Kirk going to take please, care of business. Please don't overthink this. It's a division dog. Though. Please, please don't overthink this. Yeah. But it would be again. I mean, is the, does Detroit fall into any of these like desperation team models? No, because they're one and one and they're two and oh against the spread. Right? Yeah. I mean they're uh, coming off a win. Football guy coming off a win, celebrating, falling off his chair. I mean the counter and it's a pretty strong counter is Minnesota coming off a loss. Minnesota at home in the spaceship. Minnesota uh with Justin Jefferson. He feasts on He's a guy who likes to pad his stats. Um, he just you know, got everyone, destroyed. Yeah, embarrassed. He got embarrassed. It really is a bounce back game for him. Uh, so I, I yeah, think you're chalk. right. Let's go Minnesota minus six here, and, which is surprising. That's the contrarian play. I think people may be getting a little bit ahead of themselves. It's not surprising the Lions, at all. But the Lions, the Lions have looked pretty solid though, but their secondary is worrisome. Sean, you can do pretty well. Fading teams coming off a, a ass kicking on Monday night. Well, and also too, we haven't mentioned this. Uh, the the Lions price may be inflated because they play two home games. This is their first road hey. game of the season. And they're the hard knocks team. This yeah. is a new trend we have to start watching, Sean. Hard knocks teams that then have two home games. Yeah. And they win both of them. I don't know no, if they, they only won they covered both. Covered, yeah. That's all. We're, we're that's the marketplace we're talking. <laughs> Win ATS. Well, just right. wanted to be clear, right? Next the up, Eagles got that victory. We next won. up, eight. Yeah, you're right. Uh, they got the straight up victory, but not the one that matters. All right, Houston heads the Chicago game of the day for us. We need this one, Sean. The Texans oh, plus two and a on. half, plus one twenty on the money line. Bears minus one forty five. Forty and a half is the total. 
Oh, this ga- this game is just gross. Lovey Smith revenge game. Let's go. I mean, I may have been you know, loser gets the first pick. <laughs> I may have been ahead of market with my uh, Justin Fields might be good take, but again, much like Mitch Trubisky, I don't think they're doing him any favors in the way they're scheming up this offense. Like they're just they're taking the ball out of yeah. his hands, and he's only attempted twenty eight passes in two games, which you know seventeen in the monsoon. Okay, I get that. And I thought he actually looked decent in the monsoon. He 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 converted some big plays, he, some yeah. broken plays when he had to against a really good defense. Dude knows how to slide in the rain. Um, only eleven passing attempts against the Packers. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, you know, I I, I so never have I seen the public get so out on a coach so quickly with Nathaniel Hackett. But I I do wonder if what we're seeing in Eberflu. Eberflus, Eberflu, mm. Eberflut is a guy who's not. He's clear. Like the the offense isn't. It's not going to be able to win many games. And so much so that I I don't think like if, if them being favored is embarrassing. It's not. I, I even the Texans like this should be a pick 'em. You can't have this Chicago team lay points. It implies that they can score points. And I again, can we? Can, well, and there also will too, not like, be weather. Like I think Texans' best oh. asset as a team is their defense. I think Derek, you put Derek Stingley on Darnell Mooney. Like, how, how are they getting passing yards? I mean, and we, I, and we I know- saw this Texans team go into Mile High in Week Two against a you know in elevation and really kind of put the clamps on that Broncos offense. Now. I know well, it's oh I don't they, know if that's impressive or they out gained them or they got some drives. But no, like they played good defense. Um I, I thought they just played a hell of a game on the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, the the counter is like how are the Texans are g- gonna score? I think Damian Pierce is gonna have a big game in the same way that the Packers really worked uh AJ Dillon a bunch. So uh, Aaron you just Jones. Watch the Packers do it. Yeah. I mean, certainly the Texans aren't quite as good, but I, I I love the and I do love the lovey revenge spot. I think I think that's uh, huge. I think there's a little bite I think, still left uh, and left I think, over. I think I mean Lovey Smith and uh, Eberflu might have more in common than we think. Like, isn't Lovey Smith just an older, craftier version of Matt Eberflu? Probably. And you know, I I don't think you mentioned it, but the Bears do have a look ahead spot uh, against the Giants. Of oh course, God, they gave right. their their first round pick away to for the privilege to draft uh, Justin. What's Fields. scary is the Texans have scored three field goals yeah, well, and no <laughs> touchdowns in their last eighty two minutes of play. Oh well, but it's not. Bad. But the Bears aren't Small doing any better. Size. Bears size. aren't doing any better. And I think you know the one thing that excites you about the I I think the Bears defense might not be as good as is. Uh, whatever the weird perception is of after one monsoon well, game and one actual game, but Tunsil versus Quinn, if Quinn doesn't do anything that this defense isn't going to be able to do it. No. Right. And that's a great point. Cause uh, Tunsil, you look at the PFF stuff, he's been up there as far yeah, as he's dog. Uh, yeah. And he dog. believes Davis mills is a dog. dog. We need to see a little bit more out of our long neck friend, uh, Davis mills, but I'm with you. Let's go. Let's go. Texans plus two and a half. Yeah, let's let's take the points. And you know, don't be afraid to sprinkle sprinkle the money line maybe. No, I'm not afraid at all, right? And he, you know, here's the hot take. Jerry Hughes, big game. Let's find a prop where he has the most sacks this weekend. Jerry Hughes, Houston Texans. Let's, let's go. Uh Ryan, speaking of sprinkling, uh you know, it is fall or sorry. <laughs> it is fresh ball fall. Uh, you know, and when you th- when you hear the term fresh ball fall, what do you think? Pumpkin spice? Uh, making your crotch look nice. Oh my God. Someone got paid to write that. Oh. God bless the great folks over at manscape. I actually have my, uh, my anniversary mm. uh, tomorrow night, Ryan. Wow. And you know, my wife is going to be enjoying fall ball fall where I rake my leaves and get rid of the foliage to expose my <laughs> gourd. I, I wrote half that they didn't even, uh, they didn't even go with gourd. Gourd is right there. Uh, manscaped is a high quality product. If you hate pubes as much as I do, and again, it makes your uh, makes your uh, makes your gourd look longer. If you're if you're worried about that, they got. I mean, again, I remember when I was in my young twenties. Where was Mar- Manscaped? Where was their crop preserver and ball deodorant? Where was their crop reviver? I don't know. I I'm unclear about what the crop reviver <laughs> and the crop preserver does differently, but both smell great. 
And again, you, Win- winter time versus summertime, Sean. <laughs> exactly. You don't want your sex life to go into hibernation. That's why you got to use manscaped.com. I use it. I love it. Can't wait to crack open the Manscaped travel bag and man, it just works. It's plain and simple, Ryan. It gets the job done. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code SGP. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the promo code SGP. And remember, if you guys aren't buying stuff from Manscaped, the ads will go away and you will no longer be able to hear about me, uh, you know, cutting my pubes. You don't want your, you don't want your pubes to end up like a corn maze, right? Your uh, your it's, old your old lady getting lost in the corn maze. Oh, I don't know where to go. I'm lost in all these pubes. You don't want that to happen. Manscaped.com promo code SGP. Ryan also <laughs> brought to you by No House Advantage. They're changing the game. Uh, you know, like Manscaped changed the pube game. No House Advantage. They're changing the the fantasy sports platform game. You can win $250 in cash with their pick'em contest. Of course, you can go head to head versus the house. Uh, bet on up to five player prop over unders. We're going to be giving out our favorite no house advantage picks on uh, Friday's episode. So tune in for that again, uh, NASCAR, MMA, PGA, NBA. They got it all sign up now with the promo code SGPN at no house advantage.com or download the app. Get a first deposit match up to $25. No house advantage.com promo code SGPN last but not least promo guy.us. That is right. The best place to go if you're interested in plus EV betting strategies. They got daily updates on odd boosts and huge cash bonuses from all the major books, and they got a VIP Discord group that puts even deeper plus EV analytics right at your fingertips. Uh, you know, we've been looking at their promos, and they're some of the most informative in the game. They don't simply tell you what team is probable to win, but where you can get the best odds and how to track down and cash in big on constantly changing promos. If you're not already using mathematical models to help you with your picks, you are missing out on an insanely valuable tool. And the best part is promo guys run by a small team of passionate sports fans dedicated to building a well-informed, better betting community. Go to promo guy.us. Check out their hundred percent track, transparent and proven method for betting smarter. So check them out promo guy.us. Nice work, Sean uh, chat as always loving the manscape, Kansas city. Coming off long rest, little mini buy for Andy Reid. Thursday night win over the Chargers. They're heading to Indy. They're gonna get some of that sweet, sweet shrimp cocktail. Plus, so this this number's moved a bit. Wow, it's down to five and a half. I'm gonna confirm this because I did I did think it was a little shorter than in. All right, five and a half. Can are we confirming this? Yeah. I don't know. What do you know? I'm All looking right. at. I'm staring at it right now. Over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com yeah. slash win bet. Looks like it's uh, it's like that everywhere. Mm, interesting. What's going on here? Minus five and a half for the Chiefs. Minus two forty on Sharks the money line. Pushing the number down. Colts plus one ninety five fifty is the total. All right. So this is a close your eyes special. Yep. Colts underperformed the spread. Not only are they dogs, Sean, which is like you said, strong trend. We'll call it two thirds, but the home dog ticks it up a couple percentage points. Dog. So, <clears throat> as I clear my throat, what the fuck do we do here? Andy Reid with long rest and a Chiefs team that looks like they're just in fuck it all mode. Well, and there's there's so many matchups that you gotta love. One, Patrick Mahomes six and zero oh. in domes. Two, Patrick Mahomes against Gus Bradley defenses seventeen touchdowns. Only two picks. Uh, Colts are letting up league high seventy two percent completion percentage. Colts have been horrible against the tight end. Ryan, breaking news: Chiefs have a pretty good tight end in Travis Kelsey. Um, this is hard. Colts have lost ten games in a row as home underdogs. They've covered in five of the last six, though, so that's where it gets interesting. Um, you know, not surprising. And matchup wise, I try. Ryan made fun of me for talking about Matt Pryor, yeah. but Matt Pryor was the starting left tackle for the Indianapolis Colts. He was a six round yeah. pick that the Eagles drafted as a guard a couple of years ago. <laughs> this guy's not a left tackle. I knew that coming yes. into the season. Somehow Frank Reich and the Colts didn't know that. He got <laughs> benched halfway through that game against the Jags. And so now they're starting a rookie out there in left tackle. I I think Karloftis and uh Jones, who have been just generating so much pressure for the Chiefs, they're gonna have a field day. Against Matt Ryan, I'm just I can't do it. I can't bet Matt on Matt Ryan. Ryan. I know the so I bad. know the public's all going to be all over the Chiefs 
and yep. it's going to be in every teaser yep. and the sports book's going to need them. Yep. But fuck all those people. I'm not betting on Matt Ryan. You could put a gun to my head <laughs> and go, you have to bet on Matt Ryan. I would just look at it and go, pull the trigger. <laughs> Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. You bitch. Less painful than betting on Matt Ryan. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a you know, maybe it jams. Maybe there's a maybe there you know, maybe it's a like a Russian roulette. Sorry, Ukrainian roulette oh, type thing. Wow. Um, I, I Wait, just what? <laughs> well, you can't say Russian things, right? Okay. You got to help the people of Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, I just, there's no way I'm betting on Matt Ryan. You can give me every stat in the world. That guy fucking sucks. He throws a bunch <laughs> of interceptions. There's my handicap. KC uh, minus five and a half. Man, I get fired up in these shows. Let's go. Do we just have a power surge? I feel like we just had a little bit of sur- that. Could have been your power, your surge. But uh, I mean, look, Sean. They call it a close your eyes special for a reason, right? Yeah. Uh, you you laid out all the cases as to why everyone's going to need this game. It's sitting squarely in that weird spot where it's like, what? Chiefs minus five. All the money's coming in on the Chiefs, and yet what? It's not going to seven, Sean. Mm. It's going. It's like a yo-yo. It's going back down. Will this close where? Four and a half? Four? So confusing. It's again. Take the, it's take the Colts. Don't don't overthink it. We've been doing this for a while. I'm taking the Colts. I'm not staring in the eyes of the beautiful close your eyes special. <laughs> I, I mean, look, she she's in the room. She's in the room with me. I, the lights are out. Well, so no is Matt, one has so is, to know. So is Matt Ryan. <laughs> no one has. To you know. have to live with yourself of betting with Matt Ryan. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Right. No one has to know that I bet Matt Ryan. I'll do it in the dark. <laughs> close your eyes, special baby. Let's fucking go. No way. Next up. No way. Well, it's back to back. Close your eyes, special. Ten really? a.m. kick here. The Raiders really? of Las Vegas. They're heading to Tennessee, where the Titans coming off another Monday night ass whooping. I mean. Love all of the convergence of spots here too. Uh, not quite as good because the Raiders have been bad as well. Minus two for the Raiders on the road? Question mark. Minus one thirty on the money line. Tennessee plus one ten. Forty five and a so half. So this is, is two win- two winless teams playing. Two each winless other. teams, which I we didn't lean into the the winless angle, but it, all that applies to the Colts as well. Um, yeah. So both of these teams are zero and two. Both of these teams are zero and two ATS. Tennessee has looked. <clears throat> mm, I don't know. It depends how you think how you feel about the Giants, but <laughs> some might say Tennessee's looked fucking horrible. Yeah. Well, and and so there's a there's a there's a bunch of interesting trends here. Obviously, the close your eyes special. Uh, Tennessee, though, again, they struggle against bad teams. Two and seven against the spread in their last nine versus sub five hundred teams. Um, we had the Mike Vrabel as a dog thing last week. Uh, I think it was 18 and seven. Now he's 18 and eight to me. It's like Devonte Adams only had two catches for 12 yards. They're going to go out of their way to force feed him against his Titans defense, which it's a good point again. Now that Landry has been out, they just really struggle to put pressure on the quarterback and shut down big time receivers. I mean, Steph Diggs just destroyed them and, and I get the bills are operating on another level. Um, but Derrick Henry doesn't seem like he has a, a ton of juice. Um, Tennessee oh, historically one not in, yet. <laughs> one in five against the spread in the last six games when playing at home against Tennessee. Yeah, or when, uh, when playing at home against Las Vegas. What really scares me off of this is, you know, I, I didn't see it watching live because I had the Eagles game on as well, but they they lost Taylor Luan, uh, the Titans, their left tackle, possibly yeah. for the entire season. To me, that matters. That's a game changer because if you're going to succeed with this uh, Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry play action, uh, get it to trail on Burks kind of offense, you need some time. And if you lost Taylor Lewan for the season, that is Max Crosby is sitting over there licking his chops, talking to me about how he's going to get me the defensive player of the year ticket just on this game alone. <clears throat> so matchup wise, I, I have to take the Raiders. That's that's the only angle you have because I, I I'm I'm fine having Vrabel as a dog still. I'm fine as Tennessee close your eyes special. Las Vegas favored on the road. To me, that's the biggest thing that yeah. stands stands out. And I'm I'm a guy who likes this Las Vegas Raiders team, but I, no, everything it's, you it's, laid out about Tennessee applies to the Raiders as well. No, and no, it's it, you know, again, it's not gonna be my locks, but I've decided walking it back. No, I'm I'm just saying I 
I feel strongly about other games on the slate. I'm just I'm gonna lean into both the teams are banged up. So I'm gonna like, lean into handicapping the offensive line. And when you lose your left tackle, that's huge. And I, I don't think this Titans team can recover from it. Early kick for the West Coast Las Vegas Raiders. Does that matter? No. Do we, do we care about that anymore? We gotta so get our shit going mentally. We don't care about the long grass down there in Tennessee. Raiders have a look ahead spot against Russ, Denver. Nah. Any of that matter? They've lost two games in a row. They're they're both playing for their lives. Since two thousand three, two winless teams play. The underdog is sixty four percent ATS. I'll finish on that. Give me the Titans. Tighten up, baby. <laughs> Buy low spot for Vrabel. All right. Uh, you could say I mean you could say that about any other two team. Yeah, but I'm I'm not buying the Raiders low as a two point road favorite. That's that's the uh thesis. All right, another ten AM kick. Classic battle. The Saints head to Carolina. This is it. This is a true uh, house of long grass. Panthers are plus three, plus one thirty on the money line. Saints minus one sixty. Forty and a half is the total. Uh, this I mean, I, this I is another seventy thirty game. And people are betting the Saints. Yeah, this is insane. I mean, this to me, Saints are zero two. We ATS. always love the Panthers in this spot because the Saints dome team struggle when they play. Even though it's field turf, we still call it the long grass. Um, and the and the Panthers, they've lost back to back games on field goals. Don't, don't ruin the bit. <laughs> um, and I I broke the news days oh. ahead of the hack, Jay Glazer. I mean, why does it, we have such a great audience? Why does not anyone pull out the clip of me breaking the Jameis Winston, much like he broke his back, news Ooh. that he had trouble at like five days before, you know, a couple days before. Everyone else had it. I mean, there's a good chance we're seeing Andy Dalton on the road, um, which again, Baker Mayfield at home. But Baker Mayfield at home getting three points, which seems to be their nemesis. Uh, three points. They've played close games. Yeah, um, uh, and I think you know from game one to game two, they got McCaffrey more involved, and their offense was better. Who's more desperate, um, Coach A or Coach B? Because it feels like it's Matt Rule. I yeah. don't know if Dennis Allen's that desperate yet. Uh, this feels like he could get fired, right? Could could he get fired on the field, Herm Edwards style, after this game? <laughs> yeah, Matt Rule. I mean, there was that stat where he's like one in twenty five when they allow more than seventeen points. I don't think Andy Dalton or Jameis Winston in a back brace can put up seventeen <laughs> points. I just don't think so. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm intrigued I, because I mean, I, of zero and two teams, who has looked the best for you, Ryan? Ah. Uh, I mean, Carolina has competed in both games. That's probably more than you can say about most of well, Atlanta too. Yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta was scrappy in both the two games. AFC South teams. Would and, and yeah, I mean, I guess the Raiders hung around. I mean, they should have won that game. Like the Bengals seem to have bigger systemic problems. Yeah, like it's clear that Matt rules the problem in Carolina because they have a good team. They have a good. They have good players on defense too. Like if they play their best game, they could lock down the Saints, and they could win a game like twelve to fucking six. So I, I'm absolutely. This is I really like this dog pick. potential here. Yeah, dog. Taysom Hill could ruin our party, and that would just be the, wor the worst <laughs> way for the. Party I know to they're they're saying Andy Dalton's taking snaps, but we haven't ruled out Taysom Hill. Come on, guys. Oh, I didn't even use it, but uh, Jameis Winston eight eighteen and one ATS. That's really. Cool. Uh, as a favorite. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say. I think, feel like he's usually scrappy. As a favorite, New Orleans uh, also bad against bad teams. Two and thirteen against the spread in their last fifteen versus sub five hundred teams, and that that actually feels relevant because I feel like they have been getting even last year when they had quarterback issues, they were probably getting a little uh, uh, a little bit more respect than they deserve. I'm enjoying how much the chat is hating all my gross picks because I, it does <laughs> feel like one of those weekends where the uh, the books might have a nice one. Uh, although uh, Boston Capper chiming in saying charity bet, Carolina absolutely oh, loses. Geez, this guy. All, All right. right. What well, you pick? Yeah, sure. Capper. We're in. Kappa. All right. Last thing we should let people know that Carolina has lost their not last nine ATS. Full disclosure. They're due, Full man. Disclosure. They're due. <laughs> All right. Last of the early kicks. Is that nine early game, Sean? Are we gonna have to work? Is the teardrop coming out this Sunday? It is. Philly coming off that Monday night win, heading to Washington, laying six and a half on the road here in a divisional spot, minus two ninety on the money line. 
the football team, AKA the commandos plus two 30, 47 and a half is the total. I'm almost certain that you're going to spit in the face of any of those trends that you highlighted earlier. That would indicate maybe we should look to commander Carson and the football team. Well, They're not, they're not winless, right? They're not winless. Yeah. They, they were, they beat the Jags somehow. Uh, Wentz 3.88% turnover worthy plays Jalen hurts <laughs> zero, <laughs> zero point MVP. zero super team assemble. I mean, super I, team I, you, assemble. I like the catchphrase, Ryan. I appreciate it, it yep. but you're not, you're, you got to work harder. If you're going to try and take down this Eagles, team. I'm not taking anything down. Okay. I don't need, I'm, I, I, I think Jalen hurts has been great. I He's think, been balling I think out. the offense has been great. I have questions about the defense and, and when they get into a real dog fight. And uh, I mean, this I here's Carson what's, here's what's gonna, gonna happen. Carson Wentz will sit back in the pocket a little bit too long. Fletcher Cox, Josh Sweat, strip sack incoming. Oh, I think this. I is, mean, he's gonna he's gonna create some turnovers listen, that are gonna be the difference in the game. We, if we can get one left-handed throw, we're gonna win by fourteen. We points. are a content company, and there is nothing. There is nothing. This is literally everyone picking one team and just looking at the screen going, Oh, I've seen this story before Carson Wentz. Yeah. Your former side bitch then made, made full on husband then discarded with the trash. Uh, cl- still claim that he is part of the super bowl team somehow. He did, even though he didn't he play on the field. And he won me two hundred grand, right? I have coming, a soft spot in my heart for him, back, but not not this Sunday. He's coming back into your life as a six and a half point home dog. He's led. He's he's he's. What, what are the, this is like. Uh, this is like almost like when Ben Simmons I, was on the Nets and came back to I, the. I can't wait to bet against him when he comes to Philly. I still don't think he's going to be at that game. No, I think he's going to have. Does a, he finish this game? I do. I, I've predicted his injury before. It won't happen today because they are absolutely going to take down the f- currently high flying who can possibly stop them. People talking about them as a one seed, a favorite to, whoa, I should go bet them plus 800 to have the most wins in the NFL. Sean is, uh, if you're not watching on youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, Sean has left the room. I can only imagine he's looking for his rare breed chain to show everyone how much, how high he is on this team. As much as I as much as I'd love for the uh, the the promo to extend with an Eagles three and zero start, there is nothing more obvious than than this. Sean, oh here he is showing it off. Sean is so confident. And, and Carson Wentz is going to ruin the parade. It's going to happen during the early games. It's going to be awkward. Rare breed, untamed baby. Let's go. I'm predicting at least one jersey change. Carson Wentz pulls the upset. Give me the. Football team. Ah, the money line is appealing here. Six and a half. This is a big number. This is a I'll, big, book, I'll book that. This is a big number. All right. Moving I'll book on. your I'll book your Redskins money line. Not betting on or the you Redskins. Call them football teams. Betting on the commandos. All right, moving to the afternoon slate. 105 kick. The only early afternoon uh, kick in the one in the garbage game slot. Classic Decker matchup. Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> this game would not be on regular TV in the past. God's eye San sees it all. Diego, super chargers, charge. But if this didn't didn't have uh, God's eye, this is blackout rules do apply. Uh, mm. Los Angeles coming off the Thursday night, so a little mini buy here. Uh, Jacksonville uh, looking sharp, catching seven here on the road. My uh, plus two sixty on the money line. Chargers minus three thirty. Forty seven and a half is the total. Uh, I mean, look, this is the Jags are one of the few teams in the league that absolutely will not have a home edge in the Chargers Stadium. No. I, I do think the like a Jags fans aren't going to vacation in the in Los Angeles for a number <laughs> of reasons, and B, uh, they're not coming out here. They don't have fans, so the Chargers are going to have a nice home edge here. I I think I came into this thinking, boy. Uh, I kind of like what the Jags are up to. I kind of like the way Trevor Lawrence is looking. But oh man, Here, and, and and the Herbert news. It's like, but I I I actually think the Chargers could have a home edge here, and like, oh shit, maybe they're they get three points in here. Are well, you telling me they're only minus four against this Jags team on a neutral? Well, that that is if Herbert plays, which I would I would sure. say ninety percent chance he plays. He's definitely playing, but maybe I wouldn't say a hundred percent, Ryan. Like 100%. one one 
I mean that that's uh, that Chargers team doctor that you know <laughs> as he's going in to inject the, the pain medicine, uh, he wow. could slip up a little bit. This is, I mean, I could also see the Chargers franchise being a little conservative and being like, "Hey guys, we got the Jags at home. Let's uh, let let Chase Daniel earn a couple of his dollars. The guy's robbing a goddamn bank the way he's getting paid." Um, <laughs> This is a tough matchup for me. This is really tough. And honestly, like DVOA probably doesn't have a ton of value until later on the season when no, you have more information. But Jags are second in DVOA overall right now, which is crazy to me. Um That is that is fairly I mean I think I, I think the Jags will be able to move the ball, well, right? Because I think Christian Kirk's a tough matchup. Um, you know, there I think there's still issues in that in that uh Chargers secondary. I, I do worry a little bit about their offensive line being able to block the Chargers pass rush, which I think is good. But again, like Justin Herbert, are we going to see the Justin Herbert that couldn't like throw one yard or walk, or the Justin Herbert the next play that just threw a fifty-yard dart and got him down to the nine-yard line and somehow backdoored that four and a half? Um, that I think is obviously the big question here. Jacksonville's been horrible on the road. Uh, they have a crazy streak going, zero and eighteen straight up in their last eighteen road games. Last game they won December fifteenth, twenty nineteen. Here to me is the difference. Doug Peterson. As much as people like to make fun of Doug Peterson, when he took his teams out to the West Coast, yeah. in Los Angeles, which I went are to a taking, number of those games. You're taking the Jags, aren't you? Uh, I'm taking the Jags and the points. Holy They've shit. shown up in those spots. I think this Jags team. He is a visor guy. He knows how to do West Coast. Exactly. I think the Jags <laughs> are going to hang around enough, and just the fact that. Herbert does play, which I would guess he probably plays, but I don't think he's going to be a hundred percent. And if they can get a couple shots on him, they got pressure against Can, Matt Ryan. I feel like the, the they got pressure against Carson Wentz. I feel like the handicap that you're, I I do have concerns. The one area where I think, big part of the reason their DVOA is so high is you could argue they've had the most dominant win of the season so far, or one of them in terms of just the Colts never had a chance in that game, uh, but. I think the Chargers can rush the passer against anybody. And I wonder if the Jags offensive line is going to be able to protect cuz we like my theory on Trevor Lawrence is when he has time he's going to look fucking great. Yeah. And when he doesn't have time he's going to look horrible. And so I think that that's the matchup to me. I think the Chargers win that matchup. And if they win that matchup, I think uh Herbert, I think they can lean on Eckler in this one. And I think we could mm. see a situation where the Chargers kind of it, a little bit will like that offensive line imposes their will on the Jag. We've seen the Jags playing some games San where Diego Super Chargers. Charge. You know, I, I don't know what that Colts offensive line is. To your point, they have not looked very yeah. good, uh, and you know we the 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 Commandos not really sure there either. Uh, we just know that they've been creating a lot of points. So yeah, I, I I'm not looking to buy the the Jags also feel like they're getting some sauce. Like they're getting some, some love out there. Mm. Trevor Lawrence is showing up in the PFF graphics. Cause he's playing good. You're seeing You're hearing like, you're not the only one talking about Doug P in a, in a positive light. So yeah, absolutely. I I'm going to, I'll take the chargers here. Tell you this, talk to Justin Decker. Got a, got an inside report. Decker's nervous, Ryan. That makes me feel better. <laughs> when Decker's confident, there's problems. No, no, he 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 knew they weren't going to beat the Chiefs, and he knew they were going to beat uh, who they beat Week One Raiders. He was all over that. I I think I think Decker's dialed in, Ryan. I mean, yeah, as as Trevor in the chat's pointing out, I like I pointed out, like I earlier pointed out, I think the pass rush will be the difference in this one because, like Trevor Lawrence, with a little bit of heat. You're gonna, you know, the, what you said to me about Matt Ryan. That's how you're gonna be feeling about Trevor Lawrence. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is a little bit more mobile than Matt Ryan. Yeah, I'm just saying. I think it's gonna look bad. I think he's gonna look bad in this game. Yeah, it's fair. Bad. I'm not. I'm not super high on him. I just think what James Robinson, Christian Kirk, they'll be able to. Uh, he can throw stay in the of, game, and I and I think the Jags' defense is is better than people give it credit. You're for. underrating his ability to turn the ball over. That obviously that will be it's, the difference, right? It's a poor man's Carson Wentz. He's a more beautiful Carson Wentz. Hey, if you're looking to fade Carson Wentz or our good buddy uh, Goldilocks, aka Trevor Lawrence, I think uh, Bowser came up with that name. Uh, shout out to Bowser, assuming he was the one. It's a great nickname for Trevor Lawrence. You gotta go to sleeper. Sleeper.com slash SGP. Fire up your mobile phone. Uh, we'll be hitting you with some sleeper picks. We already gave out some last episode. 
uh, for the Thursday night game. It's so fun to do these uh, over under player props. They they have them for college as well. Uh, in a lot of states, it's tough to get the college football player props. Sleeper has you covered. And if you go to sleeper.com slash SGP, you can instantly copy our picks, get a hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Promo code SGP, sleeper.com slash SGP. Get that hundred percent deposit match. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. We're also brought to you by the Elias Game Plan app. That is right. Elias has uh, I mean, it's great. I'm I'm firing it up now because I got the Elias app. And like honestly, anytime you open this thing up. Bunch of good trends, bunch of good nuggets. I've been using it a ton. Uh, for instance, Pittsburgh five and two against the spread versus division opponents since the start of last season. Five and two against the spread versus the Browns since the start of 2019. So again, tons of trends, tons of stats, tons of information, all in one convenient place. And uh, again, they do it all by hand. There's no uh, AI or big data. Uh, good guys over there and. Again, key injuries, uh, weather, they got a little bit of everything. And if you use our promo code SGPN15, 15% off your annual subscription. Bet smarter, not harder. Download the Elias Game Plan app. That's E L I A S. Use our promo code SGPN and get 15% off your annual subscription. We appreciate it. And uh, I think you'll appreciate it as well. I mean, Think how much time you waste on your phone. At least be getting some good betting and fantasy nuggets. Thanks to our good buddies over at Elias. Last but not least, Run Your Pool. They have a new service, uh, Run Your Pool VIP. It's a subscription service that helps you get an extra edge against the books, plus exclusive access to real money pools. Uh, they got a season long pool with a guaranteed $100,000 payout. Oh my God. Plus. Premium content like in-depth guides for how to determine uh, how to dominate your pools and exclusive swag uh, and exclusive data to help you with your weekly game picks. They really have you covered. Runyourpool.com/vip. Use the promo code SGPN VIP. You get fifty percent off your first month. That is Runyourpool.com/vip. Promo code SGPN VIP. That's Runyourpool.com/vip. Promo code SGPN VIP. All right, <clears throat> home stretch. Some solid afternoon spots here. My Atlanta Falcons, Sean, 125 kick here on the left coast. They're heading to Seattle where the Seahawks are laying a point. Minus 110 on the money line. Falcons. Uh, ooh, I must have written this wrong. Falcons are minus, or I'm sorry, Seahawks are minus 120. Falcons are even money. 49 is the total. <clears throat> I know it's only a point, but. Should not be laying points. Mm. Seahawks should not be laying points. This Falcons team's competent. Like y- you, you can argue with me that the merits of their comeback and, and covering of the spread were a yeah. little shifty. They were in it early. There, there was some, you know, there was a, a a pretty vicious swing towards the end of the first half when it comes to giving up an opportunity to score and then giving up a touchdown. I like this Falcons team. I'm, I was higher than market to start the season. I still like them. I know it's disgusting, and I would probably have a problem with them laying points on the road. But in this particular matchup, they should be favored. There's not. Well, there. It's actually a pick, Ryan. <clears throat> okay, so they're still not favored. Thank <laughs> you. I. On one hand, I could easily argue with myself, like, what the fuck? You need points if you're going to take Atlanta. Yeah. Right? Like, scrappy yeah. dogs only work when they're co- because they don't win, they cover. But do you really think Seattle's going to be two and one? You you got Seattle there pegged as a two and one team here. I think Geno I mean, Smith's fucking horrible. I think Mariota is a left coast guy. I think Mariota coming back to the left coast, going to show that's out. A long, up. That's a long flight from Atlanta. And back I think to back road spot. Let's call out the things I, I usually yes. like to call out. Back to back road spot for Atlanta. And Atlanta has had some tough losses. I mean, you you can say they were competitive, but they've also just like not come up in big spots at all. I, I think Geno Smith, I I, you know, from watching the game, like I didn't think San Francisco just had a massive edge talent wise on the defensive side of the ball. And they're not gonna be facing that in this in this um can in I this Atlanta team. Can I change your mind? Okay. They're they're staying out here, Sean. What do you mean? They're staying out west. Okay. 
after their still, Los Angeles still a long trip. flight from Los Angeles to Seattle. They're staying out for the week. Okay. That's not that's, team bonding. That's a, that's a good idea. Mariota, Drake Kyle, London, Kyle hanging Pitts. out. Kyle Pitts has been complete dog shit. Yeah, um, playing cornhole. They're gonna. Hey, this is how. Okay, they're gonna I have think, the time to talk see, about Seattle, it. Seattle can be okay if the game script goes their way. If it's an ugly game and they can play from ahead or play in like a decent game script, you know, if they get behind like they did against San Francisco, they're completely fucked. But I don't think that's gonna happen at home against. Atlanta, you have DK Metcalf, you have Tyler Lockett, you have some competent running backs. I think you're going to be able to move the ball against this Falcons team. I I like fading the Falcons defense on the road. I love that, it actually. Okay. And then Geno Smith, nine and one ATS last ten games. So you can make fun of him, Ryan, but the guy covers spreads. Yeah, I mean, again, probably someone you'd rather have as a dog here. Um and well, like both teams, you could say you would want yeah. as a dog. I'm gonna go. Th- 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 they're two shitty teams. I'm gonna take the shitty team at home. Okay. I know you. You have Deal. a real soft spot for Atlanta. I do. And Mariota's becoming a guy I, I want to pull for. I like. I like what I'm seeing. <laughs> I like the heart he's playing with. He's playing to win the fucking <laughs> game. Like I predicted, he's coming. He's like, this oh. is this is my last chance. I'm just gonna fucking go. I'm running the ball when I need to run the ball. Like I don't give a fuck. That's the kind of guy you want to bet on. He's going to run when he needs to run. I don't know if Gino's going to have the same. I'm taking Mariota over Gino. Oh, what a matchup. Green Bay heads to Tampa Bay. It's a battle of bays, Sean. Mm. Uh, we get this matchup every once in a while, and it's delightful, especially when it's Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. Tampa laying two, minus 130 on the money line. Packers plus 110. 41 and a half is the total. I think I saw this. Uh, this total was six points higher. Uh, last week, which is pretty wild. Uh, people reacting to the Tampa clearly uh, with their offensive line deficiencies and their, and their wide receiver injuries, clearly shifting the, the philosophy of the offense, or perhaps it's no more Bruce Arians and it's a defensive minded head coach shifting this team more to a run first, or at least not pass crazy, crazy, crazy amounts over expectation like they did last year. All of that being said, I I haven't seen Tampa look like a team in sync. I could very oh really I could very easily I, I think the off I mean I, I think, think they looked very in sync against Dallas, and I think they conquered a demon in taking down that Saints team that usually has their number. Very very good point. Although I would say both those teams might just be bad. Like there's no reason for me to believe this Cowboys team is anything. Well, special. right, and and you could apply the same thing to Green Bay. I mean, Green Bay lost to the Vikings. Absolutely. A divisional uh, voodoo game where we've seen Aaron Rodgers struggle. We've also seen him struggle down in Florida, Ryan. Florida seems to be a spot that you're, you're taking Tom Brady. Oh yeah. 100%. Um, Because this matchup, you know, it's the big name quarterbacks, Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, but really Mike Evans. I think this is more about, um, I think this is more about the running game. You know the 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 Tampa Bay Bucks. They're going to be able to shut down Aaron Rodgers and um and AJ Dillon. Like that's the reason the Packers got their offense going is when they run it through their running backs, right? Because they don't have those big name receivers. They don't have Devonte Adams. They haven't figured out how to use these uh, young receivers yet. So I think if you can slow down their running game, which I do think the Bucks defense will be able to do, they've done that in all uh, in both their games so far. And I think they're going to be able to do it uh, once again. <sighs> and you have uh, David Bakhtiari. It doesn't look like he's going to go. And you know, there's there's clearly something going on with this David Bakhtiari thing, with both Matt Lafleur and Aaron Rodgers going out of their way to compliment Elton Jenkins, and even saying like they have no idea if David Bakhtiari is ever going to play. Like they're really kind of calling him out. And Cole Beasley. I mean, Cole Beasley, Ryan. Could have a massive game, assuming he gets called up from the practice squad and plays. If there's anyone, I mean, he is like Scotty Miller on steroids. This is this is getting Tom Brady rock hard. Um, I think this is this is a great spot for the Bucks. Love it. This is the same thing we saw last year, and the Packers went on to be a a great team, thirteen and four. I, I think. Yeah, they could still go <clears> on nothing, a run. Nothing's and lose changed this game. for me to believe that. And I know it's an early game in Florida, but 
I certainly like not having Mike Evans is a big problem for me. I I I do worry about with the offensive line, the combination of the offensive line and the lack of receivers. Like, sure, it's fun eighty nine degrees, sixty two percent humidity in Tampa. Come kick off. How how many times are you gonna bring up the Aaron Rodgers narratives and then think people talking about how Tom Brady has the upper hand on the matchup and this isn't this this is this is the ultimate days of our league, Sean. Come on. Yeah, and Tom Brady Tom when Brady's I turn win on, this game. When I turn on get up and I hear some some jabron talking about how Tom Brady, that skinny, like V looking cheek motherfucker. Has a better he's he's got mine now he's got the upper hand on me I got it Aaron Rodgers this is this could be the finale and the star of the show is not losing this game they they're dialed up they're ready to go and everything I've seen from Tampa gives me question and then oh by the way Mike Evans gets suspended that's a problem you can't just the, when the passing offense looks like shit in this game and they're not able to run the ball, even against the Packers. No, they're going to be able to run the ball, even much, against much the, like the Bears were able to run the ball. Well, That's the only thing the Bears were able to do against a Packers defense that knew they were going to run the ball. They they threw the ball what eleven times and they were still were able to run the ball. And they lost by how many points? I mean, I, well, yeah, because they don't have Tom Brady. I mean, and they're not at home. All right, uh, give. <laughs> I, I think you're. I think you're. Uh, I think we may be seeing the end of Tom Brady. I think our our tickets to fade. Like someone else is winning that division. I know they're two and zero. I understand that. I think they. I think they looked. Um, I think their defense looked good. Yeah, and that that's why I think they're going to win the game. I don't think that. I don't think the Packers are going to be able to put up points because they won't be able to establish the run against them. I think both teams might struggle to score. Yeah, that's why the totals come down six points. I mean, it's forty-one and a half in a Aaron Rodgers Tom Brady matchup, and to me, it's like which team plays better run defense, Tampa Bay. Which team's at home, Tampa Bay. Which team has the weather advantage, heat, humidity, Tampa Bay. All right, let's go. I like it. We're off. We're off on the afternoon slate, so that can only mean one thing: you must be on the Rams laying three and a half points as they head to Arizona, minus one ninety on the money line. Kyler Cliff. They're plus one fifty five. Oh, they're dogs, home dogs. Dog. Kyler finally figured out he's got to run to get it done. Forty nine is the total. I mean, these are <laughs> these are t- both teams I want to fade right now. But um, public is coming early to the window to back the Rams. I know we're supposed to lay the three and a half, not take the three and a half. I mean, the the thing that's scary. I'm on the cards here, catching three <clears throat> really? and a half. Yeah. The thing that's scary here is that the Rams have really dominated the Cardinals under Sean McVay. Um, yes. I would hope that uh, Kyler gets up for this game, but again, he's shown that even late, if and you know if the Rams get up big like they did against the Falcons, I mean, can't car can't uh, fucking Benny Hill uh, just run around and and get some late garbage points and cover this spread? Um, I, I Car Kyle Murray Kyle Murray one and six. Uh, against the Rams, I mean, they did start off really bad against that Raiders team. Very fortunate to get the win in Las Vegas, but maybe it gives them a maybe it gives them a nice confidence boost. The Rams almost lost to the Falcons. Now, I think the Falcons are a decent team. No, no, that was just more about the Rams blowing it. And the Rams, you want to talk about the Rams uh, teams that are inflated because of two home games. I think the Rams fit that model. They did get their ass kicked in one of them on prime time. Right, but I, I, I think this should be like a pick. I, I don't, I don't get where you're making. What have you seen out We're of this Rams team? Because I think the Cardinals are viewed as a really bad team, and if they didn't have a miraculous comeback, they would be zero and two, and we would be talking about Cliff Kingsbury getting on the hot seat. He maybe he's already on the hot seat. Yeah, uh, I just think what we saw is we saw Kyler say, oh. Like that was his moment post signing the big contract. Oh, I got to run around for this team to be good. That's that I, I I forgot my bad. And while it looks hilarious and he totally looks like a cheerleader or a gymnast or whatever I said, I I have to t- again. This is a week of more than seventy percent of the tickets coming in on the Rams. There's just like this he, is well, an the, ultimate the Ram- contrarian weekend. The Rams have thrown uh, Stafford's thrown five interceptions at home. Now he's going on the road. And 
like I don't know if this is relevant, but McVeigh has Shanahan up on Thursday night next. Okay. Like back to back. I I'm sure he's not looking past Cliff, but you know he has a thing for Kyle Shanahan, and you know he's got to be fucking pissed he doesn't get to face Trey Lance. Dude, Matt Stafford's going to turn the ball over since 2021. Matt Stafford has thrown the most interceptions with 22. He he tied Trevor Lawrence last year for with 17, and now he's added on another five. That doesn't even include the the stuff he threw in the in the playoffs. It's it's crazy. Rams are 0 and 2 ATS, so I guess technically. There's maybe been a, a, an adjustment on this, but it's not enough because you're still able to get three and a half. You're still, I which think that, means you're lot. You're down eleven. The Rams are just pretty one dimensional too. You're down eleven. You're live against this team with with uh, Kyler tiptoeing around in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, I, I to me the handicap here is the I'm I don't think that in a divisional spot we can trust this Rams. The Rams offense looked good for a half against the Falcons. It struggled at times. Sean, they, they, they struggled against the Fal again, again, I like the Falcons. I know the Falcons don't have a great defense. They struggled. Again, their their offense is not what they it has turned been. it over. They uh, turned it over. Cup was fumbling. They turned it over. Stafford's throwing picks. But they also just don't have like, I guess we're seeing why it's better if Higby isn't as involved in the offense. And they just don't have the. They, 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 they don't look have like a, they look like a sloppy ass team because they and, can't run the ball. And and maybe they'll they'll wake up, but they you know they gave up a blocked punt for a touchdown. Like they just look sloppy. Again, what what Sean they Mc- they've lost the eye of the tiger. That was my thesis for them coming into the season. They've lost the eye of the tiger, and I don't think I've I haven't seen anything in these two games that have made me think that. If anything, it confirmed it. They got their ass kicked at home week one against Buffalo. And then they almost lost to the Falcons after being up big. Like that is a team that's not hungry. <laughs> the hangover was certainly affecting the Bengals. Uh, also seems to be affecting the Rams, Sean. Neither team who played in the Super Bowl has covered a fucking spread. That's a good angle, Ryan. Tweet that out. Oh, thank you. Sunday night football. Um this one, I wish we could flex the early ones because do we really need to see Jimmy G the return of Jimmy G San Francisco on the road, laying a point and a half in Denver plus one Oh five on the money line for Denver minus one of 20, for the Niners 45 is the total. All right. So a lot of my picks this week have been okay. Gambling brain contrarian side, no brainer. Obviously the money is coming to the Niners. Everyone is talking about how Nathaniel Hackett is a horrible coach. Yep. Here's what so the smoke is interesting, but it's coming from football guys too, which means something must be real about this, which means someone inside that locker room has sent a text. Maybe it's already Russ trying to subvert I another mean, coach. The, the Broncos fans were counting down the play clock. So they didn't get a delay a game. I've never seen that in, in the NFL. It, it seems, I mean, could you pick two different as far as Mojo, what are there te- two teams more farther apart than the 49ers who have like, hey, we finally got the good guy. We got rid of the guy no one likes. Uh, and now we got our buddy back, Jimmy Garoppolo. Now we're going to go on the road, fuck up the Broncos versus the Broncos. It's like, oh my God, we almost lost to the Texans. We're 0 and 6 on, uh, you know, goal, uh, goal to go. 0 and 5 in the red zone this season. That's uh, coaching. Yeah, and again, some of it I guess is due for a little bit regression, but also just as an eye test guy, they look like dog shit. I watched every play in that Texans game; they did not look good at all. And Denver has struggled in prime time, one and nine straight up in their last ten appearances under the lights, and zero and seven in the last seven on Sunday Night Football. We saw Hackett struggle on the road in Seattle, and now he how has another. How, this guy how, how, now he has another prime time game two weeks later. I just think it's a lot of pressure, and you know Judy is banged up. The offense is clearly out of sync. Um, what if Russ is also a dud, just a complete yeah. airhead? And Pete Carroll was at like the 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 horrible structure of whatever you hate about the Seattle offense at least kept Russ effective. And, and it this, looks Nick, this, this Hackett guy. He's not. What about he, what 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 is he doing that makes you think he understands how to use Russ Wilson? Or did he establish that Russ isn't what he used to be, 
and that he he's trying to make the best of a bad situation, like Joe Judge QB sneaking on third down <laughs> to protect the the team. I mean, the the, 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 the 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 play calling and execution. It's tough to decide which sucks more, but it's clear it sucks. And San Francisco, as soon as they carted, as soon as they <laughs> they strapped Jimmy G on that or uh, Trey Lance on that cart, and he was giving the people the thumbs up. Has there ever been a time where people are like, hey, we don't care if it's thumbs up or thumbs down? Jimmy G came in, then all the players are like patting him on their, his head. I mean, they had a they got out of a QB controversy yeah. thanks to Pisses injury. Me off. Um, and you know, speaking of injuries, George Kittle looks like he's deciding to play. Uh, so I think that's a nice oh. bump for them. Well, now that Jimmy G, that the, you didn't yeah, hear that's, the, that's the, no coincidence. Well, that the sources inside the locker room are saying that it was actually he was standing for his. Uh, his side piece. He he was not going Sertan, to play. Uh, doesn't look to be playing as well. Um, Simmons is out for them. It, like the Lock injury potential. situation is really bad for them. And uh, again, like I just haven't seen any sort of kind of competency out of the out of the out of the Broncos right now. And the 49ers are just rock hard. Their defense looks really good. Um, I, I think they're going to be able to pressure us. Like I, it's. It's tough for me to think of like a lot of matchups that are going to go Denver's way. Special teams has been a disaster for them. Let me ask you this: Why? So, what about this matchup is any different than Baltimore and New England? Or you would argue that San Francisco should be favored by more than Baltimore should be over New England? I guess like the the number is very fishy because I I could New England at least to me has looked a little bit more stable. But this is all Denver preseason projection because what yeah. is that? Like at least, at least with Baltimore and New England, we've seen good and bad. Well, and also too, like New England obviously is a much better coach. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like this, it why it I isn't mean, two I mean, and a half? Why is it isn't three? Like, mm, yeah, what, where is this going to well, go? I, Who's betting Denver plus three? I know Russ is a dog. Or, well, I, 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 to your point, I still think there's some preseason hype surrounding Denver. They're zero two ATS, so there is that angle of like their stock is lower. Obviously, yeah. this number shows that, but this is the Jimmy G game. Like, we're gonna see the potential of this team. This is a blowout. This is forty to ten. I get, I get, I love this to be a fucking slaughter. You know what? We need to find Kittle props this weekend. Yeah, I, I just think they're gonna go off. Like, uh, you know, they finally got to be with who they wanted to be with the entire time. This is just like the get right game of all get right games. So yeah, I'm I'm big on San Francisco. This Let's is go. if Denver was catching five and a half, you could talk to me in the same way we talked about the Colts as like a really gross dog, but. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Research Russ. flat earth saying like, Hey, maybe, uh, maybe an angle to consider is San Francisco struggling with the mobile quarterback with fields. I don't think Russ is mobile anymore. The guy doesn't, uh, the guy doesn't run anymore. Uh, again, what if, what if Russ was being propped up by Pete Carroll in that, in that offensive staff? <laughs> so then you're taking the Seahawks. No, I'm just oh, okay. throwing things out. All right. Well, no, if no. you like Pete Carroll, no, no, I'm saying, I'm no, I'm saying uh, he, he propped him up. Hackett doesn't know how to mm. put the, the the saddle on Russ. If you know yeah. what I mean, he's off doing it's weird bro- TikTok Buck and videos. Bronco. Monday Night Football, Sean. The Dallas Cowboys. Do, 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 do. Some call them the Cowgirls. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, some call them the Cowboys. Uh, we'll call them. Uh, we'll call them Dallas. They head to the Big Apple, aka New Jersey. Take on the two and O New York Football Giants. Brian what? Dable. Ryan, is there any chance that Brian oh. Dable was holding back the Bills' offense? Oh no! No, I'm just saying because the Bills' offense has been much better in their first two games without Brian Dable. Ah, oh, they've played a couple crap teams. They what played the mean? Rams and the Titans put up 72 points. I mean, the Rams barely beat the Falcons and the Titans <laughs> lost the Giants. Sean, I'm just saying yeah. it's a fun theory to have. I'm winning, I'm winning this debate. New York, <laughs> what? Oh, you're dominating. Minus one, minus one twenty on the money line. Dallas plus one hundred. 39 and a half is the total. If you said Giants shouldn't be favored last week, you lost. If you said Giants, or if you're going to say Giants shouldn't be laying a point against Dallas this week, you're going to lose. Cooper Rush is now 2 and 0 in his career. Yeah. Here's the thing after the last win, he didn't go back out there to no. play against the team. With Usually tape. it's that second game where it 
Wink Where Martindale. Really, if there's one thing I will bet on this year more than anything, and more than even the offense, Wink Martindale, I guarantee fucking T that guy knows how to fuck with a young ass, not good quarterback. With a Dallas Cowboy team with a bad offensive line and limited options in the receiving. Like the one thing you would say about the Giants is, uh oh, they're not real good about they don't they don't have a ton of depth in terms of coverage. I'm not worried about the Cowboys. Schultz out. Zeke, big and fat. Wink Martindale is gonna <laughs> fucking chew Cooper Rush's face off. I love this matchup for the Giants defense. Love this matchup for the Giants defense. A little worried about Tony Pollard versus the linebackers. But Cooper Rush, come on, it's game two. This is obvious, Sean. This is actually this is a classic handicapping spot for us. Yeah. The 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 fuck, guy fuck the Cowboys. The, I'm on board. Well that that's one. Here here's they what get, I would, they got tape. Here, here's Wink what I would, Martindale, gold chain, got tape. Here here's what I would say if you're if you're concerned about backing the Giants, no. uh Daniel Jones combined 0 and 8 in prime time, 12 interceptions, three fumbles. Who? 0 and 3 on Thursday night football, 0 and 5 on Monday night football. Uh New York Giants offensive line now ranked 32nd, and they're going up against Micah Parsons. Uh, Cowboys have won nine of the last ten against the Giants. Ryan, talk me through how the Giants are going to be able to block Micah Parsons because that that to me is the concern. Uh, you, you would say the same. I mean, have you have you watched their last couple games? Yeah, they didn't play anyone tennis, like Micah Parsons. Well, Tennessee Tennessee is actually in the top six in adjusted sack rate. I'll I'll throw some numbers out there that small but who's, sample who's size. Who's close to Micah Parsons? I, I mean, look. I will happily if Micah Parsons wants to come over to Andrew Thomas's side. Okay, that's fine. If not, we got to double team him. I, I'm less. I'm actually less concerned about the edge pressure. It's the interior stuff mm. that I'm worried about. And I think specifically that's why Tennessee was a tougher matchup. I think because of uh, having someone like Simmons in there. And, and in a way, I could even argue that you know Carolina's defensive line. They have pretty good. Uh, did you watch Brian Burns not do shit against Andrew Thomas as well? I I just think the edge pressure isn't as scary, and so yeah, I I think that Dallas has a great defensive line, great pass rush. I I, I trust that Kafka and Dable can can scheme some shit up just like they have the past couple of weeks to do enough on offense, and let Wink do his thing on defense. And win a low scoring, gross game. Giants three and zero. Let's go. Look, I, I get why you would say the Giants are, are they? They're they're barely. Uh, they shouldn't be two and zero. They 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 played two close games, and you're absolutely right. And sometimes that regression takes a season or two to catch up. We talk about it at the end of each year. I mean, yeah. Sometimes also teams win close games because they're fucking excited. You know how many videos I've watched. Of players after they've done shit well at the end of the game, the sideline is hype. Sean, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. The team is playing just a little bit harder because they trust what the defensive coordinator is letting them do, and they trust what Dable's letting them do. And so, yeah, has Daniel, has Dan Jones, by the way, never played a primetime game. This is his first <laughs> one. Has he had moments where he could have done more? Yeah, absolutely. Oh wow, absolutely. And could is the offensive line still a work in progress? Absolutely. But like I started. On Monday night football, when somehow Wink Martindale has gotten the fucking Giants crowd to even make a little bit noise. I don't know if you saw this, Sean, but they were making enough noise for it to make the news after the game versus the oh Carolina Panthers. God. Crowd makes noise. Breaking Wink news. Wink Martindale is going to put Cooper Rush in a fucking locker this weekend, Sean. All right. That's the hand. Inspiring. I'll take I'll Are take we it. done? I'm 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 ready to go home. Too much football. <laughs> Time for the Lock Dog Tees presented by WinBet. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Bet big, win bigger. Kramer? I apologize for the long podcast, but football's happening. All right. Should I go first? I mean, I guess we don't want to you mess up your lock record. Time, right? No, I you've gone first the first two weeks. Uh you've been four and on your lock, so I don't want to mess up the But mojo. how how have you been? No, uh, one and three with my locks, but I've been well, two and zero with my dogs. Uh, you're a mojo guy, okay. so I'm. You want to mix it up, mix it up. I'm not worried about mojo. Not worried about mojo. And there's plenty. I, I, I'm I'm locked in right now. You do whatever you. Yeah, I will happily go first, but I will also happily not go first. 
We might be lock fighting on one of these. Okay. All right. I'll go first. All right. San Francisco minus one and a half. My other lock. So there's some interesting opportunities here. There are some nice opportunities. Oh, do I take, I, I do like the Ravens, but is that getting cute? Uh, no. Is Win, it winners aren't winners are always uh, a little cute. Take Baltimore minus two and a half. Let's go for my dog. Do I take Houston plus two uh, plus plus one twenty on the money line? You're fading Justin Fields this week. You, you crazy animal. Oh, I mean, I, I'll go Panthers. Carolina plus one thirty on the money line. Uh, and for my tease, tons of interesting teasing opportunities here. I'll go Arizona plus nine and a half. I will take uh, Houston up to eight and a half. And then take uh, Steelers 10 and a half. Let's go. It's going to be an ugly game. I feel like I should do one tease down, but I don't like any of the any of the favorites really, except Kansas City, and that game scares me. All right, Ryan, what do you got? So I uh, I one hundred. I don't want to have the same lock as you, but I agree with the Jimmy G thing. By the way. All right. Well, we can make it. We can add it to our Carolina card. plus three. Okay. Lock number one. Bengals minus five. Lock number two. Like that you did that there. Oh, I you. Had, no, I like I, I like that play. Uh, it, it it was I was considering it as well. Dog. I, how am I? Can we do small dogs? Sure, you own a small dog, right? I do have. You own sm- two small dogs. I have a small dog. Give me the Packers. All right, you're right. Give me Kyler. Kyler plus one fifty five. That's a real dog. Tease. Oh man, I, I we don't like. That. I'm not gonna put. I Pittsburgh on Thursday night's a fun dog, but I'm not. We won't put that in the tease. All right, uh, for the tease, give me Green Bay up to eight. Not give, bad me, give me Chargers down to one. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Actually, no. Get, get that out of San here. San Diego. Give me Tennessee up to eight. Superchargers charge. And give me Houston up to eight and a half. Just I'll give you another week, Wong. All right. So for our card, Carolina plus three. Duh. Cincinnati minus five. Yep. San Francisco minus one and a half. Fading the Patriots. Baltimore again. minus two and a half. Fuck. And then, uh, and then we got to put Chicago. Uh, Houston. You faded the close your eyes special twice. I actually. What do you like- mean? No, Baltimore isn't a close your eyes special. No, no, I'm neither saying, is San Francisco. I'm saying I'm just looking at your picks. You faded the close your eyes special twice. It was just okay. a statement in a vacuum. All right. All right. So other picks we agree on: Giants, Cardinals, Houston, Vikings. Yeah, come on, Ryan. Houston's our team. Steelers. Or I kind of like the Vikings as well. Which what do we need for the formula to work? Do we need the extra dog? Yeah, we do. No, we got we got two dogs, three favorites. That's what I mean. We should have Houston in there. Yeah, you're right. Let's <laughs> go. Houston's in. Let's go. So for the circa millions, Carolina plus three, Cincinnati minus five, San Francisco minus one and a half, Baltimore minus two and a half, Houston plus two and a half. Hey, toss us a rating and review over on Spotify. Submit your screenshot uh, in the uh, SGPN app. For your chance to win $100, maybe $200 gift certificate to the SGPN store. Use that promo code NFC Beast, 20% off between now and Tuesday. Tune in uh, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time, live pregame show, taking your calls over on Discord and the postgame show as well, uh, right after Sunday night ends. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stagging the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Sean, in case you missed it, first touchdown Thursday night bonus, Trubisky, Brissett, both defenses, all 35 to 1. Kramer, let it ride.